Hello, my name is Ken, and I want to welcome you back to Deep Waters. This podcast is brought to you by Applied Strengths Ministry, where we believe working together in our strengths is the effect of working out the will and calling of God in our lives. The title of this message is Church Purpose, and surely we got some traction now. This is Series 2, Episode 3 of 28. So to be clear, we know that Jesus is not returning to get a harem. But, and to say it again, You would think that with so many different denominations and non-denominational churches, we think that this is indeed the case. I'm not talking about the religiously deceived churches, but the Christian church full, or at least having the desire to be full, of authentically born-again believers. I'm not saying that this is wrong to have so many church options. What I'm saying is that the options, because they also include in some cases major and minor differences in what it means to be a Christian, can be snares and traps more than unifying and building. And many exclude the Holy Spirit, and if they do, toss them out. Some preach a different gospel, toss them out. Some are money hungry and lazy, toss them out. Some fail to equip the saints for the work of ministry. They already toss themselves out. Soldiers without ammo. We know who wins that battle. In my reading about churches, I have come across many of the denominations that have taken on the name of an apostle or a voted saint of God, as if they are the end of the best to come down the line, Ephesians 4.12. No, I get that they, we, did so to honor the saint, but wouldn't it be more prudent to honor them by sticking to whatever worked for them and allow it to also work for us? You, we the believers, the authentically born again, full of love and action, are the saints. The fivefold ministry is equipping the saints for the work of ministry. If that's you, then be sure to get equipped. And perhaps we can make a statue of you someday, although I wouldn't consider it for a minute. If we make a statue of anyone, it should really be for no one. One is not better than the other, regardless of position or accomplishments. The Holy Spirit is not in the business of making heroes. He is helping and leading us to equip the saints for the work of ministry, so that we would all look like Christ. I expect that if it were possible for Luther or Calvin, who did the will of God, to come back down to earth, they would kindly ask us to remove their names from the building, as they know, as well as we should, that there is only one church, not a harem, I say. Look at what our mess has caused. I hear people ask, are you a Calvinist or a Methodist or a Nazarene? Maybe you're a Catholic. You are either an authentically born-again believer who with every bit of the marrow in your bones, is rushing after the things of God to both obey and to know him intimately, loving and serving others using your personality, talents, strengths, gifts, and spiritual office to equip the saints for the work of ministry while also making disciples that remain, or you're hoping for a statue and a nameplate. Most of my hearers have probably never heard of Smith Wigglesworth, and yet I say if you read anything of his accomplishments, you would leave the chasing and start your racing. 1 Corinthians 9, 24-26. No worries, though. It isn't like they are all out of sorts or anything. However, what remains, well, what remains? I say that rhetorically because, and for the purpose of this message, we are hard-pressed to find a Book of Acts church that is filled with a bunch of prepared and equipped saints working through the Holy Spirit who are transforming their community, turning it upside down and inside out. Acts 17, 6. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city, crying out, These who have turned the world upside down have come here too. Has anybody heard this in the last hundred years? Please, please, please. If you are the exception, then everyone else should be following what it is that you are doing. We should be modeling your example. If this is not you, then this message should not at all offend you unless it offends you to action different action. Keep in mind when offense comes, it usually is a sword of the spirit doing its work, and our bellowing out is the uncomfortableness of being rightly divided. Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow. It is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Short transition from topic, but not the message, although I don't know what the topic is anymore. One of the things I really enjoy doing is reading about the individual efforts of some, which is never done individually, that have changed the world for Jesus. 
Smith Wigglesworth, Catherine Coleman, Amy Semple McPherson, Count Zinfendor, John G. Lake, William Seymour, John Sung, D.L. Moody, Martin Luther, Maria Woodworth Adder, John Wesley, and many, many others. We've had so many saints working to build up the kingdom of God that were, by the very circumstances and character, hidden from view of the very public church. Who were these Moravians? That they should build a prayer tower and have a 24-hour prayer service in it for over a hundred years. Shouldn't the manifestation of the future always be an improvement of history? These guys left a legacy. They would send missionaries over to the rough part of an island, and when they stepped on shore, they would get speared down. The news would get back to the camp, and the leader would share the story stating, for example, that Tom and Mary were killed right out of the boat. Anyone interested in taking their place? Almost all of the hands would dart up into the air. We asked for a few volunteers on a Sunday, and most of the feet shoot to the doorway of excuses as to why they are too busy to serve in the house of God. Would we get the same response from the body if Jesus himself asked for help? Well, it is him doing so. You know, if we as Christians depended on the American democratic system to equip the saints for the work of ministry, then we are very deceived. You see, in my short life, I have discovered something, and that is that they, the government, leaves things out when teaching us stuff in and through the educational system. This is why when we stopped reading the Bible in school, we started to become secularized Christians. Of course, this is not true if you had a real on fire, authentically born again, believing parents who actively fought against spiritual ignorance. I leave you with one example before moving on. I was totally unaware that right at the very center of the Civil War, there was a full-blown Holy Spirit-empowered revival happening. Now, you will notice that when we think about the Civil War, we think about slavery. But we don't think about the God who was moving through over 300,000 souls. Interesting, isn't it? In fact, if you read Christ in the Camp by J. William Jones, you will see that something spectacular was happening, and even at times, right in the middle of the battlefield. I mean, who sings songs and worships God as bullets are whizzing by their heads and cannonballs are dropping just feet away from where they were standing? 300,000 salvations in that war. Yep, but no big deal. You get that on a weekend, right? All kept secret, but not hidden. Who says you can have a revival in the middle of a war? Shouldn't we be teaching our kids this stuff? Shouldn't we know that when the fight's getting on, then the Christian pray and act as if the revival of revivals is on its way? So some of the saints mentioned above, i.e. Smith Wigglesworth, Kathleen Coleman, Amy Semple McPherson, Count Zippendorf, John G. Lake, William Seymour, John Sung, D.L. Moody, Martin Luther, Maria Woodworth Adder, John Wesley, and the many others, grew large ministries that even started churches. But unfortunately, many of these Christians, including hundreds if not thousands not mentioned, had to leave the church with an address because the church didn't want any part of what was going on. In other words, the church or church leadership did not want the spiritual battle at the front door, at their front door. Many, I say many, still do not. Now, history has shown us that whenever the Holy Spirit starts moving, the battle intensifies. What that has and will continue to look like is well-meaning, stupid, and ignorant Christian peeps, church members, board members, the ignorantly educated, and the like, start shouting the Pharisee shout, away with him, or rather it, or rather them. You would think that many of those who are absent of the Holy Spirit think that only the devil has power, and that if you kick the Holy Spirit right out of the service, all will remain quiet. Doesn't that sound like a demonic strategy to you? Our Lord is not quiet. In fact, he's coming back with a shout. Another piece of background before we get into the really good fiery stuff. Wait, we are into the really good fiery stuff. Anyway, the topic of revivals and awakenings. Oh, to be in one like the Welsh or Azusa Street events. I am sure I would not have to be sitting here in the wee hours of the morning typing up such messages if we were but daily drowning in his presence. One of the more famous and well-known spiritual events to have ever taken place and was so public at the time was the Azusa Street Revival. Although, if you told this to a Welshman, they may say, hmm, Evan Roberts was walking in some pretty cool stuff as well. And to that I would say yes. And to that I would also say that it doesn't matter. We should all be walking in some really cool stuff. Well, that's it for today. Read some of the referenced authors and ministers that I have mentioned, and just perhaps a revival will follow in your way. 
Remember, it's not what you find wrong or disagree with regarding these messages, but what you can take away from it. Together, we can do more to impact the kingdom than if we work alone. Let's flip the script and kill, steal, and destroy the work of the enemy and create space for the light of light to shine through into people's lives. Plant a seed and click on the like and subscribe button. Let's build this ministry together. Thanks and see you next time in deep water.